Hello and welcome to this complete guide of Bamboo Studio. So if you're watching this video, chances are you just got a brand new Bamboo Lab 3 printer and congrats, they are some really great machines. So in this video, the goal is to make this program as easy as possible for you so you get started 3 printing whatever you want right away. So when you go to this tab right here, this is the prepare tab, this is where you will slice your file or prepare it for 3D printing. And if you're brand new to 3D printing, slicing is, let me just slice this uh, design right here. Slicing is basically, as it says, it slices the file, the 3D model into layers right here that you can see, and the 3D printer will print this object layer by layer. So in this example here, we have 40 layers, and you can see you can drag this slider right here. So let's go back to prepare and I'll show you exactly what we're looking at here. So when you open up for the first time, you have to add your printer right here. So this button here is where you add printers or select which printers you can choose from. So in my case, I have X1 Carbon with two different nozzle sizes. Um, I don't have a P1P, so I'm going to deselect that. I have a P1S, which might be my favorite Bamboo Lab printer, uh, A1 Mini, and an A1. You can also choose some non-Bamboo Lab printers as well. So go ahead and select whatever printer you have and then click Confirm. Now from this drop-down right here, you can select the printer. So in this case, I'm just going to select the P1S and it has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then right here is where you select the filament type or color. So if you're using Bamboo Lab filament, uh, it should detect what filament you're using. But if you're not using it, you can click this here and you can select which type of filament you are using. Now the most common uh, filament is PLA. It's the easiest to print with as well. And for Bamboo Lab printers, I found that Bamboo Lab filament does work the best. It's the most seamless filament to use with the machines. It just works really well. Um, and if you click this button right here, this uh, settings button, you could choose or you could add um, all the different filament options uh, for the slicer. Um, so by default, there should be a lot selected, but let's say you bought some Bamboo PLA silk, you just go ahead and check this box here. Okay, and then once you click here, you can select which type of filament, like so. So if you click on this box here, you could change the color in the slicer. This is mostly needed if you're using non-bamboo filament or if you don't have an AMS or if your printer for some reason is not detecting uh, which type of filament. So in this case, I have it selected just to some orange color, but you could change it to, if I change it to red and you just, there's no okay button, you just kind of exit out and it will update the color. So now we have a global here, which is where you change the settings for your 3D print and objects right here is where you can see the objects in the, uh, on the build plate. So right now what we're looking at, this is a representation of the 3D printer's build plate. So when you want to slice an object, all you do is you take your STL file and you simply just drag it right onto here and you'll see your object appear like so. So let's go over, uh, before we get into the settings here, let's go over um, how to move and arrange objects on the build plate. So simply drag your STL onto your build plate. And if you go up here, we have a move tool, a rotate tool. So I'm going to rotate this object just kind of in a, a way that I don't really want it to be just to show you one of the features. So let's say we have an object right here and it's not in the orientation we want. Well, there's a couple options. Uh, we could click on this button here, which will lay it on one of the faces. So I can select this bottom face and it will lay it down flat or I'll press control Z here or you could click on uh, this button right here. So these are actually buttons right here. If you click on this one, it'll automatically just lay it flat. And this button here will automatically arrange it. So let's say I have uh, two objects. So if I right click and go to clone and click OK. Now we have two objects and I think they should fit. And it doesn't really make sense for two big objects, but if you had a bunch of little objects, you can click on this button here and it will arrange automatically all of your objects. We also have scale. We also have a, a really interesting one called cut. So if you click on cut, we can actually slice this model. So uh, let's say our, our model is too big for the build plate. We just go here and we can just create a 90 degree vertical cut like so, and then click perform cut. And now we have two objects and I'm not sure why it flipped the object this way, but once again, you can click this auto uh, lay flat button and it will lay it flat like so. I'm just going to delete these like this. 
Okay, so now we have our one object. But let's say we're using an AMS, so we could do up to technically 16 colors, but if you have one AMS, it'll be four colors. You could add slots of filament like so, and you could change their colors, just like this. You just click on this right here, and you can change the colors. And maybe that's uh, this blue color. Now, let's say we want to assign a color to our object. We'll go over to Objects, and now, you can click on this here and select which color you want it to be. So let's say, let's go to filament slot two in the AMS or the automatic material system. And now it'll uh, choose the second slot when we go to print this. All right, now let's go ahead and look at some of the settings we have here um, in our slicer. The first and probably most important is the layer height. And this is the setting here that determines kind of the resolution or the quality of your print. By default, it's set to 0.2 millimeters, which is standard. It's a pretty good option for most cases. But let's say you don't care about the resolution. You could go to extra draft and it'll print much quicker. Okay, so here we have the settings, and right now we do not have the advanced uh, toggle switched. Um, and most of the time you might not need to toggle advanced. Um, and really, you don't really need, ever really need to change these settings right here. Um, strength is something, you might wanna change these strength settings depending on your object. This object right here is a threadboard. It's a kind of like a 3D printable pegboard um, that I sell. That's a 3D Printer Academy original design. And you could change the number of wall loops to increase the strength. So wall loops or the outer shell uh, kind of determines the strength of your objects. It's one of the things that does at least. Also, you could add uh, more top and bottom shells. By default, it prints four top layers and three bottom layers. So let me just go ahead and slice it so I could show you that creating the G code. So now you can see, if I go down to the first layer here, it, it'll do one, two, three, three layers of bottom shell. And if I go to the top here, you can see it prints four layers of the top shell. So both the, the wall loops and the top and bottom layers will determine the strength of your object a lot more than the infill. So by default, it's set to grid. Um, two of the ones I like to use, or three I guess, would be grid, support cubic, is a good faster infill, doesn't use as much material, and lightning is very quick and not very strong, which is great for prototyping. Um, there's also cubic as well, which is similar to support cubic, but it's it's just a consistent density cubic, whereas support cubic, it's a good in-between between lightning and cubic. I think cubic, though, might be one of the best options uh, for strength um, as well. So if you go over to support, this is where if you have a complex model that can't be printed without supports, you would just click this checkbox here to enable the supports. And over here, we have other where you could change settings like the brim. So right now it's set to uh, auto, which sometimes you may get a brim to help hold the part down. A lot of times I'll switch this to no brim to force it to not create a brim because most of the time I never really need to print it with a brim. So why would you want to use a brim and why would you not want to use a brim? Well, depending on the build plate that you're using, brim may or not help you out with bed adhesion. PEI generally does a very good job with uh, build plate adhesion and you could change the build plate right here by clicking this uh, drop down. I think the P1S comes with the PEI plate. I think most of the most of the printers do come with a textured PEI plate by default, um, but the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon comes with a cool plate and an engineering plate for uh, more advanced materials. So once you go ahead and select all of your settings, you'll wanna go ahead and click Slice Plate. Now, one of the cool things about the Bamboo Lab Slicer is if we go back to prepare, let's say we were printing a very large object or a bunch of objects, you could actually click on this button right here where you can add plates. So now let's say we had multiple objects. Now we could kind of set up all of the different uh, objects we want printed all right here on these uh, different build plates. It's really great if you're printing, let's say, a uh, object that has a lot of parts and you can just arrange all of the parts ahead of time. And you basically will just, you could just click on the build plate to choose which one is active. So let's go ahead and slice this build plate right here. 
So once you have the object sliced, once again, you could preview the layers and you could also preview um, inside of that one layer itself, like so. So now if you go, let's just go up to here, you could change what you are previewing. So you go to line type, filament speed, a lot of interesting things to check out. Um, if you go to filament, you can see all the filament stats, but I like to use the line type stats here and you can see that we have the infill lines, the shell, they're all different colors depending on the line type. And here's some interesting estimations of the object. You can see how much the length of filament it's going to use. You can see the weight of the filament, the cost, um, the prep time, that's kind of the calibration, it takes usually about six and a half minutes of just calibrating. And you can also see the print time. So this threadboard, uh, this I think five by seven threadboard will take about uh, a little over an hour and a half and cost $1.77 USD. So when you're ready to print the object, all you have to do is go ahead and click print plate. And here you can even choose which AMS slot you want after the fact. So even though we've selected our object and set it onto the second color, this orange color here, you can still go back and select a slot later. So let's say I want to select, I don't know, this, uh, a white color, I can just select this, and even though it's orange, it will print from slot A1, and that is the white filament. And right here, you'd select which printer you want to print with. So right now, I have it selected to one of my Droid printers, which is a Bamboo Lab P1S, and it has an AMS, so that's why I have these slots right here. And when you're ready to print, um, a lot of times it's automatically set to print with a time lapse which could be annoying because it sometimes would move the nozzle over to the side and take a picture. Um, so I usually just deselect time lapse like so. And I always pretty much enable bed leveling and um, any calibration depending on which printer you have. And then you simply just go ahead and click send. And that's basically a crash course of Bamboo Studio. I hope that helps you kind of understand uh, everything and how it works. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible. My name is Steven. Thanks for watching and happy printing.